Uh, Mr. Nader, it's uh, really great to speak with you. We're live. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for taking 10 minutes out of our time. I see you got media lined up down the hall here to talk to you. Uh, I've you know, looked at the two candidates, Barack Obama and, of course, John McCain, and I really don't see a lot of differences. Uh, can you uh, compare yourself to both John McCain and uh, to, of course, Barack Obama, please, sir? Well, I think they're both uh, John McCain Incorporated and uh, Barack Obama Incorporated. I think they have deferred the hopes and dreams and the necessities of American people uh, to dialing for corporate dollars and uh, doing the, the demands of the corporate lobby. Having said that, obviously they have different personalities and temperaments. For example, if you get John McCain angry and you are a defense contractor and he's president, watch out. It doesn't matter what the other Republicans will say. Just the way he went out after that Boeing tanker, $19 billion deal when he, as, as senator. Barack Obama, if he becomes president, um, he's going to have a harder time saying no to African Americans, poor, hot, white, and Latino. Why? Because they're going to say, hey, you're supposed to represent our interests. You becoming president is not just another career move, you know. It's supposed to make a difference. With McCain, you're going to get a perpetual, uh, a perpetual war candidate. Uh, I don't know where he got his aggressiveness and his militarism, given his experiences in Vietnam, but it's it's uh, it's demeaning to him. And I think he he's got to come forward with the same kind of, of fervor in waging peace and putting forth the humanitarian uh, face of America, which is the best way uh, to prevent trouble. Well, comparing yourself to Barack Obama, he said that he was going to basically pull us out of Iraq. Now he's said that we're going to be staying there a while. He's talking about going into Afghanistan, increasing the troops, uh, Pakistan. Uh, he uh, voted for the warrantless wiretaps of American people. What would you do if you were president with the warrantless wiretaps, with the rendition, Guantanamo Bay, all the horrible uh, police state developments we've seen, sir? I would stop the war crime. That's what he has to face. How, when he, if he becomes president, is he going to stop the continuation of Bush Cheney's war crimes and the violation of our Constitution? That means no wiretapping without judicial approval. You can get it very quickly and retroactively with the FISA court. Uh, that is a, a violation of federal law without a, a judicial warrant. You know, it carries a maximum five-year jail term. That means do not head into the hottest, hottest hornet's nest in the world which are the mountains of Afghanistan and Pakistan with our soldiers. No one has ever conquered that area. The British tried, the Russians tried under the Soviet era, and we're not going to be able to do it. And the third is withdrawing from Iraq but leaving 50,000 soldiers there and leaving military bases there. How is that going to knock the bottom out of the insurgency? Well, that's doublespeak, isn't it? Of course it's doublespeak. And as military aid basically said, there'll be fifty to 80,000 soldiers there. And uh, the corporate contractors will stay there because they're maintaining the military bases, Halliburton, KBR, uh, Blackwater. Um, I think uh, Barack Obama is trying to talk on both, out of both sides of his mouth. Mr. Nader, you're, you've run for president before. Why are you running for president again? You know, the control corporate press says, oh, the perennial candidate. Uh, why are you running for president? Because I want to improve my country. I want to help the American people. I want to take the solutions off the shelf which are great solutions to affordable housing, public transit, pollution cleanup, uh, solar energy, and put them on the ground and give the American people more small business, more entrepreneurship, more rights as workers, and the freedom to form trade unions and to put our foot forward in the world where the best of America is seen, not napalm, cluster bombs to the Israelis, and more weapons of mass destruction sold to countries that are often run by dictators who use this these weapons against their own people. And we wonder why people in the third world hate us. Well, we're glad that you're running for president. I know a lot of the viewers and listeners out there uh, as well. And you look at the polls, you see Congress with its lowest approval rating in history. Gallup poll reported 9%. Cheney's got a 9%. Bush a 22%. The Democrats are unpopular because you have the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the American people are all together on what they want. It, you know, it's funny. Constitutional positions are happen to be very popular with the people, but we have the two-party dictatorship going forward. Uh, and certainly, by running, you are helping to inject real issues into the debate, similar to what Ron Paul did on the other side 
uh, of the spectrum, but almost meeting very close. Alex Jones, you're one of the few radio talk show hosts that ever says what you just said. What you are, are saying is, let many voices be heard. Let the First Amendment be used by all Americans. Open up the debate process. Why are we limiting presidential debates? We don't limit weather reports. We don't limit entertainment. We don't limit sports. That was my next question. I want uh, you are really here to bring attention to the fact that we have this corporate monopoly that's hijacked the public trust of the debates. Can you speak with your particular expertise at that, being locked out of debates that you were invited to? Even though national poll after national poll from 2001 and me on the debates, Buchanan on the debates, they want more people on the stage than, you know, two major candidates that are basically spouting the same old slogans that they spouted weeks before on the campaign trail. They're not really debates. They're parallel interviews. And the debate commission is a private company created 21 years ago to get rid of the League of Women Voters, which sponsored debate, controlled by the Republican Democrat Party. To this day, they pick the format of the debate. They pick the reporters who will ask the questions. And naturally, they know how to pick them. Well, it seems they're more scared of letting a third party or an, or an individual like yourself, you know, who has the gravitas and the history, you know, to really challenge him in, because more than ever, the two-party system is under threat. They know the people are wising up to him, so there's no way they can let Ralph Nader in there, because if they did, you could capture the minds of the people uh, and, you know, capture their attention and their imagination, and then we could actually get some change in this country. Nader Gonzalez were on the three major presidential base, Alex. It would be a three-way race. The CNN poll has us at 6%. Uh, we would go up quite rapidly with tens of millions of people finding out that we're actually running, finding out what we're running on, finding out that our rhetoric is based on a record of challenging the big boys for 40 years for the health, safety, and economic well-being of the American people. That's the Nader Gonzalez ticket, and that's the theme of our super rally uh, during the Democratic National Convention Week in uh, in Denver. And uh, that is coming up tonight. I only have two final questions. I'd like you to give out your website, different campaign information, and tell us about the incredible Super Rally tonight uh, with yourself and, of course, uh, Matt Gonzalez, Val Kilmer. Uh, we have uh, Jellaby Afra, uh, Nellie McKay, Cindy Sheehan, uh, Ike Riley, Sean Penn, uh, and so many others. Tom Moreau of Rage Against the Machine. Absolutely. Big fan of his that are coming up tonight. Uh, but uh, my, my final question for you is this. Did you? And I should have asked this before the interview, but I didn't have a chance. Did you see Cy Hirsch before that big media conference three weeks ago? And then the New Yorker reported on it, but didn't give the details that his White House sources, we know how credible he is, uh, said that Dick Cheney, uh, a few months before, uh, right after they tried to stage that event in the Strait of Hormuz between Iran uh, and Iraq uh, with the fake radio chatter, tried to paint up, uh, wanted to paint up U.S. boats like Iranian blue patrol boats and have Navy SEALs, quote, have a shootout between uh, larger U.S. naval vessels as a false flag event. A, did you hear of that? And B, what is your take on it? I think uh, that Dick Cheney is a multiple warhead criminal recidivist as vice president together with his uh, president, George Douglas, who violated our Constitution, our federal statutes, and international treaties that we solemnly belong to, like the Geneva Convention. Second, I wouldn't put it past him, Alex, that he wants to create uh, something worse than the Tonkin uh, Gulf uh, facade, that he would really uh, want to create some kind of warlike uh, move against Iran in order to hype the public and shut down dissent and win the election for the Republican Party. So you think that's a real danger? I think it's very much a real danger. Should there be a congressional investigation immediately started, or, or do you have any other ideas of ways to, to draw attention to the fact that Cy Hirsch, the most respected investigative journalist living right now, uh, except for maybe yourself, you've worn so many hats, uh, would, would come out and say this, and, 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 and only Keith Overman covered it? The people in the Pentagon, Alex, are worried about Dick Cheney and the neoconservatives and the drumbeat against Iran. And the drumbeat against Iran uh, could get this country in a, in a huge amount of trouble because it's bigger than Iraq. The Straits of Hormuz could be blocked. Think what that could do. Oil prices. Oil. Uh, and, and the prices of gasoline, yes, heating oil, and the economies of the world. So I think the Democrats should make a declaration and say, if Bush G makes a military move, make a military move against Iran without consulting and being cleared with Congress under constitutional provision, mm -hmm. they will move immediately to impeach him in the, both of them in the House and convict them in the Senate. And you would do that as president, wouldn't you? So 
Absolutely. Well, sir, in fact, the criminal laws apply to presidents and vice presidents when they leave office, just as they applied to Nixon on Watergate before Ford uh, pardoned him. And so Bush has declared these new powers that never existed. In closing, yeah. tell us about the campaign websites and the big rally that's coming up tonight, sir. Get on our email list, whether you vote for us or not. Nader Gonzalez, the website is votenader.org. That's votenader.org. The Super Rally is at University of Denver, the Magnus uh, Auditorium. Uh, it's a very good place, and we want more of you to show up. It starts at 6.30, and I'll tell you, you'll never forget it. Uh, after you go through that kind of robust rally where people do not have marbles in their mouth. Folks, you can buy tickets at Denver Nader HQ 1155 Sherman uh, Street. Mr. Nader, as always, thanks for spending time with us. Thank you, Alex Jones. And for working so hard for the cause of liberty.